Wednesday is World Hijab Day, a day to celebrate a woman's choice to wear the headscarf as an expression of modesty and faith. So what better time to meet a hijabi hero working to improve the lives of women in a place where being a Muslim feminist is not only difficult but dangerous, Afghanistan. Now, for years, the Taliban imposed restrictions on Afghan women, denying them education, jobs and the freedom to leave home without a burqa and a man. Even though life has improved since the Taliban was deposed and some women now hold government positions, they still face violence and discrimination. But there's a growing network of women fighting for their rights, and many are using their faith to teach men to do the same. Well, joining me in the studio now is Jamila Afghani. She is the founder and executive director of Noor Educational and Capacity Development Organization. She is also a women's rights activist, Islamic scholar, and has given gender sensitivity trainings to close to 6,000 imams in Afghanistan. Jamila, good to have you yeah. on the program. Tell me what it's been like talking to these imams, training them. Have you met with much resistance? Uh, of course, yes. Uh, it's very normal when in a patriarchal society, in man-dominated society, our women start to move. Uh, when I start uh, for the first time, it was a really difficult job. Uh, I faced lots of challenges. But uh, as being from Afghanistan, know my people, know my culture, know my sensitivity, so I have adopted different strategies, uh, different methodologies to convince imams in the way uh, that I should not uh, irritate them mm -hmm. uh, and make them relax to understand uh, what I wanted to say. It was what from the Quranic perspective and from the uh, Islamic teaching perspective. That's why it was uh, uh, by passage of time, it took its place and slowly and gradually it got its uh, worth. So are you trying to explain to them and prove to them that you can be a proud practicing Muslim, a proud Afghan and still have complete gender equality? Actually, uh, Islam is a religion of peace and unity and pre religion of uh, equality. But unfortunately, in most of the countries, Islamic countries, uh, culture has uh, upper hand. And that's why mostly we cannot understand the reality on the ground. Usually culture is mixed up with the teaching of religion. Uh, in, in my society in Afghanistan, it will be a long way ahead, but still we are struggling. And I'm sure, uh, inshallah, in future, we will be in a position to, to bring this positive change. If I had to ask you, are you a feminist, what would you say? Yes, I'm a feminist, but a Muslim feminist, an Islamic feminist. I do understand the, the principles of my religion. I respect it, and I do understand my womanhood, and I do respect the sisterhood all around the world, and I believe that with unity, we can bring positive change all around the world for women wherever they are. Is part of the resistance that you faced stemming from the fact that women have been used as a, as a political porn or football, uh, especially when it comes to war in Afghanistan. I, I remember there was a, a 2010 Time magazine cover. One of the women who suffered uh, an attack, her, her nose was cut off. And the cover said, this is what happens when we leave Afghanistan, implying that if the United States leaves, this is what's going to happen to women. How do you feel when, when women are used in, in that way to score political points? Unfortunately, uh, women has been used or women agenda has been used as a political agenda or a political gain uh, since many years in Afghanistan during the invasion uh, of Soviet Union, during Mujahideen and after mm -hmm. that during Taliban era. Uh, I believe that uh, Afghanistan is our country. We know our country. We know our own 
issues and our own problems, and we have to bring the solution for our country. And uh, uh, now Afghan people has suffered a lot. We are suffering for almost four decades of our war, even more than that. And uh, now we are trying to, to bring the positive change and give women awareness about their rights, that they should not be used as a political agenda. And we are also bringing men and youth around us uh, that they should stand beside us as a Muslim brother and bes Muslim uh, brother and sister support each other to not be used as a political agenda. And one of the, the importance of the Imam initiative training program was about that. Uh, we brought Imams in to work for women's rights. And I'm sure the way we are getting uh, positive impact from this activity, I'm sure, inshallah, in future it will be it will have a very better society. You say positive impact. Give me one big example of some something extremely positive uh, that has happened. There are many, many good examples. Um, uh, well, uh, I will tell you a story of an old man who was uh, head of uh, a tribal uh, village and uh, he was against the teaching of women and he was not supporting us. Uh, when we started the training in his, uh, in his community and we brought him in the training sessions and uh, after the training session, uh, this man was uh, very much changed mm. and uh, he started working in his village and uh, he, he, uh, he uh, uh, stands in that village against the child marriage mm. and he stands for the right of education of women. Now he's going to each and every villager's home, knocking their home and asking whether their child girl is at home or whether she's at attending school or not. And he's convincing um, uh, his villager to, to send their daughters to school. And he has boycotted two, three uh, wedding ceremonies where the child bride was uh, a young girl of 9, 13, or uh, 16 years mm -hmm. old. He has boycotted the village and dismissed the whole wedding ceremony. And. Uh, uh, another story that uh, I have been sharing in most of my interviews, it's about the story of one of our monitors in the mosque. When the Imam was giving khutbah about women's rights from Islamic perspective, so an old man was crying in the corner of the mosque. Uh, when all the namazi leave the mosque and uh, this old man came to the Imam and take from his collar and shake him very heavily and says, why you were not telling us all this before? Hmm. I have committed all the wrongs. Hmm. I forcefully married my daughters to whomever I wanted. I never let my daughters to go to school. Uh, my daughter-in-law died. I didn't let her to visit male doctor. And now you're telling me all these are wrong. This is an Islamic. Mm -hmm. Why you were not telling us all this before? And now that gentleman has become uh, a, a women's rights advocate. He's working in his village for women's rights issues. The same like the other guy is knocking each and every door and sending uh, daughters to school. He, I think he has five sons and granddaughters he has. He himself take the granddaughters to school and bring them back to home. And this is the way that uh, we can see these small changes mm -hmm. occurring, but very effectively. My final question to you, and it seems to be that there's two sides to this coin, because you have all the good work you're doing. We see, see all the good work someone like Malala is doing around the world. And then the other side to the coin. So on the one hand, OK, there are women in the Afghan parliament. Malala is doing great work. You're doing great work. The other side to the coin, the Taliban is eating up more and more land in Afghanistan right now it's resurgent and we shouldn't forget that someone like Malala was shot in the head in northwest Pakistan for wanting to go to school. Do you fear for your life? Of 
forces. It's very normal. Um, I'm facing lots of threats from uh, past four or five years, mm -hmm. severely, especially nowadays it's getting hot because I have already joined government. Uh, currently I'm working as a deputy minister with Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs. Uh, inside the system, we are also working for elimination of corruption in the system. Beside terrorism, now mm. we are facing uh, mafia, corruption mafia in the system. As, uh, in the system, and of course, we are uh, having lots of life threats, uh, not only for myself but for my children, for my family members. Uh, but still. I believe it's our country. We have to build it maybe today, maybe tomorrow. Mm. We have to work hard for, for a future generation, for our children, for children of my country. And that's why we are putting our life in risk for the betterment of our future, for future of our country. Jamila, we wish you strength and safety. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much.